There are at least a few areas that Royal Caribbean doesn't allow people to visit, and I've got the list of this exclusive places up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and if you're like me, once you see the forbidden door, it's hard to look past it, right? You always want what you can't have, I think that's the lyrics to a song, and when it comes to cruising, there's a few areas that Royal Caribbean doesn't allow any guests into, and if they do allow guests there, it's pretty limited. And, you know, if you're like me, you're probably intrigued by this idea about what Royal Caribbean has behind the velvet rope, so to speak. So today I've got a list of places that you can either never visit or places that you could possibly visit, but it's unlikely. Let's start off with number one on my list, and that are the cruise decks. Certainly, when you're on your Royal Caribbean cruise and you walk through the promenade and you go through the Viking Crown Lounge and you're in Central Park, these places look amazing, but believe it or not, there's a whole other area of the ship that you're not allowed to be part of, and that's the crew area on board. The crew areas of the ships are specifically for the crew members, and it's a place that serves two purposes. One, for them to work in, and two, for them to live in. In some cases, crew areas are a lot like guest areas because some crew have guest privileges, but... Not all crew have these privileges, so cruise lines dedicate certain parts of the ship just for crew. Depending on the ship's size and age, how much space is reserved for crew members will vary. Some of the newer ships have really upgraded facilities compared to cruise ships of the past. On many ships, the lowest decks are reserved for crew members only. This is the part of the ship that has critical cruise ship functionality, such as the engines or waste management. The lower decks are also home to most crew cabins. It's not uncommon for crew cabins to be located on decks below the water level, and sharing a cabin with another crew member is pretty common. The most common way that you can see or get a glimpse of a crew area is when you're going on a shore excursion or coming back on board the ship. Usually on most ships, you're going to see an area, a hallway, known as I-95, in which it's a long hallway that goes the entire length of the cruise ship, and that's because it provides basically a thoroughfare for crew to quickly get from one end of the ship to another. Not only are these corridors ways to get around the ship, but they can also be temporary storage. Oftentimes, luggage, garbage, and supplies are stored in these corridors until they can move somewhere else. There are also elevators and sterols just for crew members that, once again, guests are not allowed to be a part of. Number two on the list is the Royal Caribbean Production Studio. The largest entertainment producer in the world, Royal Caribbean, operates a 132,000 500 square foot facility that provides world-class entertainments for its fleet of ships around the world. The Royal Caribbean Production Studio is located on the Florida International University Biscayne Bay campus in Miami, Florida, and includes three-story studios, a 300-seat theater, a 20,000 square foot costume-making facility, 10 rehearsal studios, audio rooms, a gym, and residences for its singers, dancers, and choreographers. The point of the production studio is to allow Royal Caribbean to simultaneously prepare new shows and new casts while there's already cast performing on board a ship. Traditionally, they might have to bring new casts on board a ship and then begin the whole rehearsal process and whatnot. But with this production studio, Royal Caribbean can test out a lot of different things they're working on, like a new show, or prepare a new cast to replace an existing cast all simultaneously with minimal downtime once on board the ship. Once a cast is ready to go from in the studio, they go meet the ship, and cast A is replaced by cast B, and it's pretty seamless, and their guests should have no idea that there's been a cast change at all. Now, really, the other value of the production studio is, again, all the things that Royal Caribbean can test out when it comes to new shows, because, of course, Royal Caribbean is always looking for ways to enhance and innovate the entertainment on board. They take it very seriously when it comes to the shows. They're not just the same old been there, done that. We see new shows, bigger shows, more technology involved, and the production studio is at the heart of it. Speaking of innovation, it's hard to look past the Innovation Lab and Collaboration Center. Located at Royal Caribbean's headquarters in Miami, the Royal Caribbean Innovation Lab is a 20,000 square foot office complex and innovation center, which is attached to the Miami headquarters. The design build fast track project features a two story virtual reality cave that enables designers to visualize the spaces they're creating for. Royal Caribbean warehouse space for building full-scale mock-ups, office conference rooms, and collaborative workspaces. The design of the lab celebrates innovation with a curved corner to call attention to, again, this virtual reality cave. And the idea behind this virtual reality cave is to allow designers to inhabit a full-size representation of the spaces that they're designing. They actually put on 
virtual reality headsets, and team members are immersed in the spaces through projectors that are positioned above, below, and around an all-glass platform. Prototype systems don't have to travel far when Royal Caribbean's cruise ships dock in Miami. They're only about two miles away from the lab. That allows testing on board to be able to be a really easy process because, of course, they can quickly get on board the ship or vice versa, come to the innovation lab, see things, and then get back on there. That really helps cut down the lag time between idea and implementation. Let's head back on board for more places that guests aren't allowed, and that is the bridge. And we'll also include other places like the galley, but the bridge is probably the most prominent thing on board a ship. You see it from outside. You'd love to see where the captain is and what happens. You know, we all have these images of movies of famous ships, heck, even Star Trek, right? It's always happening on the bridge. All the action is there, but the ship's bridge is not available to guests to visit. Pre-9-11, it was a little bit different, but nowadays it is a secure facility that you're not allowed to go to. The only way you can visit the bridge of a cruise ship is to purchase a ship tour. Now, pre-COVID, Royal Caribbean offered behind-the-scenes tours that visited places like the ship's bridge, the galley, laundry, and some other places around the ship as well. Now, the behind-the-scenes tour aren't quite back yet as of the recording of this video, but when they do return, we do believe they will return, that's the only way you're able to go visit the ship's bridge. Now, as you might imagine, the bridge has a lot of functionalities in really controlling where the ship is going and where it is currently, whether we're talking about docking, navigation, or anything in between, the control of the ship, the headquarters, the epicenter of everything happening is right there on the bridge. And yes, there is a chair where the captain sits to control it all, insert your Captain Kirk or Captain Picard you know, meme here because it really does kind of look like that in a lot of cases. You'll also have on the ends of the bridge, bridge wings in which they have many versions of the controls. So that way they can also see what's happening, usually used for, again, docking procedures and whatnot. But it's kind of cool. And if you ever have a chance to do a bridge tour, or just basically a behind the scenes tour, it is a really neat tour to purchase. And lastly, we of course have the captain's table. Have you ever been in the main dining room? And on the main floor of the main dining room, there's usually one large table right in the center, and it sometimes has the Royal Caribbean logo there. The captain's table is a real thing, and it is a place where, yes, the captain dines. On most nights, the captain will go for one of the seatings, usually traditional dining, and certain guests will be invited to dine with the captain. So, of course, you might be wondering, how do I get invited to dine with the captain? And just like so many things in business, it's not what you know, it's who you know. The most common way to get to dine at the captain's table, and again, I have not tried this out personally, but, you know, it's one of these it may work, it may not, is to, of course, talk to somebody in the know. Usually the hotel director, maybe the cruise director, or maybe even one of the maitre d's in the dining room. One or more of these people are usually who decide, in most cases, who gets the honor of being invited to dine at the captain's table. But again, it's not an exact science. I can't sit here and tell you that if you just simply talk to the hotel director, they'll say, sure, you can be invited to go there. Your mileage may vary, and for all I know, they may already have it already booked up for your cruise. But if you ever sit in the dining room and you see a bunch of people sitting with the captain there, some people just got lucky, I guess, or are really that cool. So there you go. There's a list of places that most people, if not everybody, is not allowed to go, whether it's on board a ship or over on land. But Royal Caribbean has its secrets and its things that they're doing that the public isn't allowed to see in almost all cases. Let me know which of these places you would love to be able to visit if you were a fly on the wall. And if you visited any of these, whether it's a bridge tour or perhaps you're a top-ranking Royal Caribbean executive and you hang out in the Innovation Lab all the time, Welcome to my channel. It's glad to have you here. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.